Okay. Hello. It is Friday, December 6th. And I know that you have homework on the weekend. You don't want to do that, but you have your test on Tuesday. You will not have any homework on Tuesday and next Friday, you will not have any homework either. So, um, I'll make up for it. Uh, but this homework is really important. Um, please make sure that you are working on it. All right. Although if you're not working on it, then um, you're not going to see this video anyway. Okay. Friday. Here we go. Okay. All right. Let's see what jokes I have. Okay. A farmer counted 396 cows in his field. And we've been talking a lot about this. So I thought it would be hilarious. Um, but when he rounded them up, which obviously means like collect them and gather them to go back into his farm. Um, he had 400 because he's rounding up, which is math term, but really he has 396. Look, so many cows. Okay. Um, and here are rebuses. Oh, look at that. Very difficult. Look at the letters. I wonder what it's spelling. I wonder if there's a word inside of another word. Hmm. And I wonder what this is. Looks like read hmm, in between something. Anyways, write the answers on your homework. And uh, I'm happy to recognize you for being awesome. Okay. Let's get to our work for today. Um, today in class, we worked on birds and the bird houses. And I'm really hoping that all of your homework is next level homework. Because that is how you are going to you know, continue to achieve mastery like you did on um, the unit three test. All right. So today we definitely saw some word, word problems using multiplication. Something really, really important today was the volume equals length times width times height. However, we are conceding that length times width is the base because that is the area and then times the height. And so, um, I just want us to remember that area of the base already means length times width and then the height. So we're going to get a range and we're going to find two different volumes and then we're going to study on our study guide. Okay. Multiply each numbers by multiples of positive powers of 10 because there are negative ones, but you won't get that until high school. I don't think maybe eight. All right. So I'm just going to do probably the first two. Uh, but I definitely want the rest of you to um, to finish them. But this is, we're just practicing powers of 10. So this is 8, 80, 800, 8,000, and then 80,000. Look, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. And then I'm going to do this last one, the bottom here, because it has double digits. So 6 times 2 is 12. And then it's going to be 120, one zero, 1,200, two zeros, 12,000, three zeros, and then 120,000, one, two, three, four, two, three, four. Okay. So definitely finish the rest of them. It's going to make all the difference. And then soon we're going to be talking about dividing by powers of 10. Oh, oh, oh awesome. Okay. Here we have some birds happening in this problem and then some beads and then some soccer uh soccer um you know well in england they call it the soccer field okay anyway here we go the red recommended side lengths for the floor of a birdhouse so my birdhouse is going to have a floor that looks like this and the dimensions for the floor, which is a square. So I'm looking for square units. You know it. Okay. Um, seven by seven inches. So that's area. Okay. Inches. So that means that my base area is 49 square inches. All right. Because this is 49. Now, it recommends a height of 16 to 18 inches. So now I'm asked for a range of volumes. And a range means more than one. All right. So here I go. I have my base area. I know volume equals base times height. 
I'm going to have the height of, this is height of 16 here. This is height of 18. And then at the end, I'm going to have a range. So I'm going to do 49 times 16. If you want to use separate piece of paper for this, please feel free. There's not enough space. No problem. 54, 24, 29. Four. Um, but sometimes pencil writes a little bit easier than the marker. Six, seven. So it looks like this is my volume and then it's cubic inches because now I've multiplied by a third dimension. And now I have 49 times 18 because 49 was my base area. 72, 32. Okay, nine, four. Two. Okay, so my range, this is also cubic inches. Word problems have word answers. So my range is 784 to 882 cubic inches. And because I have so much other writing on there and understanding and thinking in my brain, I don't have to like rewrite a whole answer because I showed all of my thinking each way. And I have the height here, I have the area here. You can do this kids. All right, a company designed for, sorry, food storage containers. The company wants to make a container with the greatest volume possible. Which dimensions representing the length, width and height will make the greatest volume? All right, so we've done this before. I want to solve each one. So I'm going to have one zero and then I have seven times three. So I have 210. And then B is 12 times six. I know is what 72 just to make sure. Yes. And then I'm going to do 72 times three. Okay. So that's a little bit more. And then C. So this one's out. C is 11 times five, we know it's 55 times three, 15, 165, B is still bigger. And then D, six times two, so I have 12 times eight, 96. So B is the big winner here, all right? Um, I'm testing each one. And I just make sure I use standard algorithm super fast and then get out of there. All right. Gemma and Leah are both jewelry makers. Use the information below to answer questions that follow. Ooh. Gemma made 106 beaded necklaces. Leah made 39 more than Gemma. Oh. So Leah hmm, has more than Gemma. So Leah is, watch, I'm writing an equation. 39 more than Gemma's amount. Okay, so I'm going to get 39 plus 106. And I'm kind of old school, so I got to do it this way. 15, I don't have to, but all right. So Leah made 145 necklaces. All right, moving on. Let's see what's next. At a recent craft fair, look at this. Gemma sold each of their necklaces, each of her, my bad, necklaces for $14 each. Leah sold each of her necklaces for $10 more. Ooh, who made more money at the craft fair? How much more? All right. I'm going to need a lot more space than I have. Um, and so each of you will too, but I will do my best over here. Okay. Uh, Gemma. Gemma has, let's just, I'm organizing my space. I have G. She has the number of necklaces. 145 times the cost of one necklace. So I have 18. Okay. Cross off, cross off, cross off. All right. Five, four, one, zero, 13. Wow. Okay. Gemma made $2,030. Okay. Now, Leah, no, not Gemma. Oh, no, I messed it up. Oh, drats. Leah is totally raking in. That's not, this is wrong. I'm so sorry. 
That is wrong. And I hope all of you were saying, Miss Cook, that's wrong. Because it was. Gemma sold each of her necklaces for 14. Gemma made $106. Um, I'm sorry, necklaces, dollars. It's late. It's the fifth one I'm doing. Times fourteen dollars, twenty-four, zero two four, six zero one. Okay, four eight four one. All right. So this is Gemma. It's still Gemma. Gemma. We'll deal with this sentence at the bottom later. Dollar sign. Gemma made one thousand four hundred eighty-four. Uh, and this cost of one. All right. Now, Leah, who made more and it costs more. <laughs> so annoying. Um, obviously, she's going to make more. Leah clearly made more at the craft fair. Uh, but obviously, the important thing is how much more. So that's what we're going to find here. 145 times $10 more. Then Gemma, so $24. Number of necklaces, cost of one. All right. Okay. So this is 20, 16, 17, 18, 4, 5. Dun, 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 dun. 10, 9, 2. All right, so Leah made, and I have to put the larger number on top for right now because I haven't learned negative numbers yet, 3,480 minus Gemma, who made 1484. Four. I'm borrowing. So now I have 10 ones minus four ones is six ones. Borrowing. I have 17 tens minus eight tens is nine tens. Borrowing. So I have 13 hundreds minus four. This is nine. And then, oh gosh, she made so much more. So she made more necklaces and she charged more. I almost wonder if the question meant to say Leah sold each of her necklaces for 14 and Gemma sold for more and then compare. But anyways, that's not what it said. So we done now. The diagram below shows the measurements for a full-size FIFA regulation soccer field, or as they say in England, the pitch. Okay. And I think in like Europe and stuff. What's the area of this? Awesome. Okay. I love this. 120 times 80 because length times width is area every day and twice on Sundays. But I'm going to look at it like this. 120 times 80. And I have my two zeros. And then I know 12 times 8. So I don't always have to do standard algorithm here. So it's 9,600 square yards. Because this is yards times yards. Yards times yards. Okay. I hope that you got that on your own. That's good stuff. All right, last one. Oh my goodness gracious. It costs $26 to fertilize, mow, and maintain each square yard, of which we now have 9,600 of them, um, before each game. How much will it cost for one field? All right. So if I have the number of square yards times the cost of one square yard, I can find the total cost. So I have 9,600 times 26. Okay. Zero, zero, 36, 54, 57, X, X, zero, 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 12, 18, 19, whoa, zero, zero, six, nine, 14, two, whoa. So it costs is that right? Can that be right? 120 yards? Yeah, I guess so. It costs two, four, nine, six, dollars $249,600 per match to fertilize it. Huh. I wonder if that's true. 
Anyways, bonus points if you figure out if that's true or not, if that's really how much it costs to fertilize or are we just, you know, multiplying by two digit number, like four by two. Hmm. All right. And this is definitely, yeah. All right. Okay, everyone. That's Friday. Please make sure that you are studying for um, the test on Tuesday. You should have your study guide and checking and everything. And um, have a great weekend. And I'll see you on Monday for the unfair game. Okay. Goodbye.